Hey, welcome to my channel. Hey, yeah. If you're new, my name is Cedric. I am an actor, a filmmaker, a screenwriter, and a YouTube reactor. And uh, I'm currently taping this from backstage in a musical that I'm in. Um, only when I have sizable breaks. I am a professional, so I'm only shooting this when I know I have like 10 minutes, 15 minutes in between scenes. But uh, yeah, I've got a musical playing in my headphones right now, so this is really hard to talk. But yeah, we're, uh, we're doing it now. So uh, that's fun. It's a nice little challenge mode, but this is when I've got time to do it. So we're going to do this now. We are on to episode seven of the webtoon. That's very exciting. I, of course, want to say thank you to my patrons on Patreon and thank you to Anitra at Say What Reacts for your support. Thank you for the, um, the, the guide to get through the Bangtan universe. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get into the episode, shall we? It's quite a delightful narrative poetry to Suga, who continually dies in the fires and is setting fire, drowning in this opening dream from V, or at least what I'm assuming to be a dream at this point. Uh, there's a wonderful narrative poetry to that. I really like that. It's nicely done. I should clarify, I don't like Suga drowning. That's a bad thing. I just, I like the, I like the narrative device. Someone please help me out in the comments. I'm not sure who that was that grabbed him, because that's, it was not V. Was it Jimin? I'm, maybe this will clear that up, but who grabbed Sugar in the water? Because it was not V, or if it's V, he changed costumes and hair colors and also his face. So I don't think it was him. Say it again. Fala Morgulis. Fala Morgulis. Mm, look at the use of colors inside that apartment. Pink and purple all day. Beautifully done. It's Jimin. It's my guy. It's Jimin. According to his question, anyway. Based on the narrative structure. This kid is a great device to point out that people who look perfectly healthy can still be sick, they can still deal with debilitating injuries. It's called being able passing. Anyway, we should just never assume things about people, you know? Because he's a kid, so he's allowed to ask. But just like, good, good rule of thumb to have. Like, people can be sick without looking like it. Okay, that's important. I straight up, I thought that kid just died. <laughs> to be fair, if I ever got to, like, hug Jimin, I would die. So. What a great way to narratively introduce the, the narcolepsy, though, right? That's really nicely done. It's not like J-Hope walks in, I have narcolepsy. No, this is a great use of, of a minor character to introduce a major character's um, life and to give backstory. Great, great, well done. Applause. He said that they remind him of his parents, the little kid, his parents who left him there. Jamin said they remind him of his parents. Tragic backstory. I shouldn't be smiling, that's really sad. J Hope, not Jamin. J Hope's parents are unfortunately personality. That makes sense. That phrase. They're in the same hospital and they didn't see each other? That's kind of weird. Maybe one of them just got. Oh, yeah, J Hope just got there because his head is bandaged. Never mind. I'm the weird one because I can't. I don't have reading comprehension. Jimin splashing his face into the sink and then having it go straight into that dream sequence is really well done. That's really good stuff. That Jimin dream sequence is straight out of a horror film. That's so scary. So something about an arboretum was unfortunate when he was a child. That was not, that's not good. That was scary. Gosh. Yikes. Seems like he's got really bad anxiety. So he should probably be getting the help that he is for that. Um, even if he doesn't like that, it seems pretty necessary, I would say. It's a fairly small thing, but I really like the use of gradients to transition between scenes. I think that's really, really nice. It just gives you a moment to kind of catch your breath and think as you're scrolling. And it also kind of narratively leads in a particular direction. We're going from dark place to a lighter place, that sort of thing. I think that's really nicely done. You're never fully dressed without a smile. Look at V's little smile when he finds out he gets to go see J-Hope and Jimin. Look at that little smile. Sorry. 
Jimin and Sugar. Regardless, he gets to go see his friends. They're at the railroad. But what the Sam heck was that on his neck? It looked like a spider bite or something. Ooh. I see V is playing the role of going, why isn't he just feeling better? Why hasn't he just tried staying awake? Because that's not how science works, V. Taeyong. There's, there's, we're talking about chemistry, man. It's not just about trying. It's about a disease. Help. He needs help. He needs help. And he's getting help. We should celebrate that. He's getting help. Classic narrative device. Overhearing people talk about the characters. So this is a, a device that you hear all the time. They use it left and right in Harry Potter in particular. It's probably the best example of that. Harry's about to walk around the corner and he hears somebody talking and he overhears something that's important to his character development and that pushes the narrative forward. You don't want me as your enemy, Quirrell. It remains to this day. Harry Potter's godfather. I won't fail him. You're afraid, Draco. You attempt to conceal it, but it's obvious. Let me assist you. No! I was chosen. This is my moment. Classic way to write it without a character having to explicitly engage in a conversation about exposition. This is much more interesting. So to have Jimin learn that this way, and of course, by extension, us. You always need to have a character that's learning about the world we're in. So to have Jimin have no idea how long he's been there, what his life is, that puts us in Jimin's shoes. We're also in Jin's shoes on how do we solve these things. So they're putting us carefully in each character's shoes as we try to evaluate what's going on and, and what the path forward is. So we're learning about Jimin Hin here. His parents put him in. He's still young. Uh, they haven't seen him. These are important character notes for us to learn moving forward. There's a metaphor to being on the lower level in the staircase. Yeah, this one was really great. We get introduced to... Um, I don't want to butcher their their names. I'm sorry. I'm just going to refer to them as J-Hope and Jimin. We get to see them and that's really great. So we actually get to engage with those characters now in the webtoon and see how they're fitting into the narrative. And they're really smoothly introduced. It doesn't feel like we're stepping into anything new. It feels like an extension of the story we've already heard. So that's really well told. Really hard to do actually. So excellent work on their end. And uh, I really enjoyed this episode. So that's two in a row that I've liked where nothing has gone hyper wrong. So someone's definitely about to die in a gruesome, violent, painful way. I guess uh, I'm afraid. In all seriousness, I did really like this one. I really liked the art in it. I liked the character introductions building into the narrative. I thought that was really, really well done. So I'm excited to see how this goes forward because we're close to halfway through these episodes now. So they've got to move forward. We're actually exactly halfway through. So this is, uh, it's it's all going to start going downhill from here, if not continue going downhill. I don't know if these are to be treated as their own particular narrative or as part of the wider one, but uh, this is a really great way to structure this. So really, really liking this. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed Take lots of deep breaths and drink lots of water. Fix your posture. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you soon. But until then, bye.